Okay. Um, thanks, everyone. Thanks for, for a, a very kind introduction. Um, I'm going to switch to my uh, PowerPoint slides. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself before we start. So hopefully you can see my slides. Um, so, okay. Um, so yeah, my name is Ian Harris. I'm an, uh, an orthopedic surgeon. I'm in practice in Sydney in Australia. I also teach and conduct research. Um, I've published fairly widely, uh, nearly 300 uh, publications now, including New England Journal, Lancet, BMJ, JAMA, and a lot of the big surgical journals as well. Um, and I do a lot of research basically into the effectiveness of surgery. And this talk is gonna cover that pretty broadly. Um, my, uh, my main interest um, is in what we call clinical research. So I don't do any lab research. I'm not gonna show you any rat experiments. I'm not gonna show you any uh, cell experiments. All the research I do is based on patients. Uh, patients getting surgery or not getting surgery or possibly getting placebo. Um, and to start off the talk, though, uh, I, I realize that a lot of people give disclaimers, so I'm going to give a disclaimer. I have no uh, industry ties. I accept no funding from industry. Uh, I accept no salary from industry. Um, I'm paid by both the university and by my local health district, the hospital in which I work. Uh, where I perform surgery. Um, and another disclaimer, um, some people misinterpret uh, what I say and um, think that I am saying that all surgery is ineffective. Um, that is not true. I still operate and I believe many operations have, have a place, um, but I think it's being overdone. Um, now, to go back and to uh, tell you where all this started, I'm going to show you this slide here. Um, now, I don't know what it's like in other parts of the world. I know that every country has their uh, sort of water diviner uh, equivalents. Um, in Australia, it's a very large uh, and fairly dry country. And so we rely a lot on water diviners to find water. Um, and this is just lifted from a recent uh, online uh, news article showing a water diviner who strikes liquid gold uh, in a uh, uh, Australian cattle property um, where she told them where to dig for water. I used to have a, a holiday house in the, in the, towards the middle of Australia and our neighbours paid some uh, one or two hundred dollars for a local water diviner to come out and tell them where to dig the well. He told them, uh, then they dug the well and they found water. So these water diviners have been around for a long time. And it's a very important part of my history because when I was starting in medical school um, a long time ago now, uh, I had uh, sort of like an epiphany um, and <clears throat> what happened was I was sitting down watching television. Now, in those days, um, we didn't have cable TV. We didn't have uh, Netflix. Uh, uh, we just had television, which had a handful of channels, and you just watched what was on. You didn't, you didn't get to record it and watch it later. Uh, you just watched it live. And I sat down one day and turned on the television, and there was this show called... James Randi in Australia. Now, many of you will know who James Randi is. He's a very famous um, sort of debunker of, um, uh, he's, he's kind of like a skeptic who goes around uh, debunking pseudoscience. And uh, a similar person uh, in Australia, a very well-known person in Australia, a guy called Dick Smith, uh, who was a scientist and uh, uh, kind of a a skeptic of pseudoscience invited James Randi out to Australia and they created a, a, a one hour television special where they challenged these diviners. Um, 
And what they did is they got a whole bunch of uh, uh, diviners from around Australia and they said, we want to scientifically test you. And if you can prove uh, that you can find water or in one of the tests they had to find gold, um, we will give you a check. And I think at the time the check was something like $10,000, which, which back in you know 1980 or whatever was a lot of money. Um, and so they got these people together and they went out to a, a, an empty lot out the back of Sydney somewhere in the suburbs and um, they uh, dug up the dirt a bit and they laid 10 pipes um, and they labeled them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, and they said to the water diviners, well, what we're going to do is we're going to run water down one of these pipes. We're not going to tell you which one and you have to tell us uh, which one it is. And if your prediction is, is accurate, you will win the prize. Um, now, this is a young kid watching this, that's me, starting on uh, a journey as a, a medical practitioner in the first year of, of medical school and being exposed to what was a very simple yet very elegant scientific experiment. Um, and I thought, what a great idea. And so what they did is they ran water. They said, well, let's test your equipment. So all the diviners got their, their special equipment, whatever it was they used for divining. And uh, they said, okay, we're going to run water down pipe number three. Um, and so the water diviners would walk across the, the test area, walk across pipe number one, walk across pipe number two, walk across pipe number three, and then their, their device would, would trigger and they'd say, oh yes, you know, definitely there's water running in pipe three. Everyone was happy that the equipment was working, the testers were happy, the div water diviners were happy. And then they began the test. And of course, from that moment on, they were blinded as to which pipe held the water. So, this testing was done over a couple of days. And as you can probably guess, the water diviners were no better than chance at finding uh, water. Um, it, it really didn't work. I think there was somewhere around 10%, um, which was uh, um, basically, they could have tossed a coin um, and they would have done just as well. So, um, the interesting thing about this was, yeah, this is a very elegant experiment. And for me, this was something like how easy it is to do these kinds of experiments. Why do we just sort of believe what people say? Why don't we test it more often? It's so easy to test. And this way we find out whether it works or not. It was just so obvious to me that this was the way to study thing and this study things and this was really the beginning of my uh, my passion and my sort of love affair with science, which carries on today. And I still do clinical trials today, and I'm still doing trials of surgery, comparing it to not doing surgery. Um, and it all started with this. Now, people think, yeah, that's fine. You know, that's a uh, that's a nice little story. Um, but what was interesting was I went back and, of course, you can find this video on YouTube. And I went back and watched it just for fun when I was writing my book in 2016. And I watched it and I thought, yeah, that's just as I remember, you know, uh, they were proved wrong and isn't science great. Um, and then something else hit me when I watched the video. And that was the reaction of the water diviners. And this to me at the time, now looking at this video some sort of 30, 40 years later, um, this is what really struck me. And what happened was they got all the water dividers in the room, they gave them the results of the experiment. They said, I'm sorry, none of you won the prize. Uh, you were no better than chance. Uh, water dividing pretty clearly doesn't work. And I thought, well, you know, the, 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 the jig is up, you know, it, it, it doesn't work. These guys need to get a new job. But none of them did. They all disbelieved the experiment and believed that water divining works. And they interviewed them and they're saying, yeah, I think there was uh, some, uh, some sunspot activity uh, that might have been playing havoc with the equipment. I think there was some, uh, some minerals in the ground, which made it difficult to detect the water. Um, there was, uh, you know, there was something wrong. Uh, the experiment wasn't right. Uh, not one of them believed the experiment. And that to me 
fascinated me because they were not looking at it scientifically. They were believing their own experience over a scientific experiment. Now, I realize now um, that that is the, the human way of behaving. Humans are not natural scientists. Humans will, uh, um, will believe their own eyes over the experiment or advice of someone else that they perhaps don't trust. Um, and uh, so to, to me, this was the same as the reaction of surgeons to experiments showing that the surgery they perform doesn't work. Now, I have seen this now for many decades. I have lectured widely on this, uh, and, and I see it happen over and over, where the practitioner doesn't believe the evidence that flies in the face of their practice. Now, the reason they weren't seeing this scientifically and the reason why water divining is still uh, popular today, even 40 years after this was, uh, this was aired, is because they keep finding water. Now, the reason why they keep finding water is this interesting map here, which is a map of Australia, and the green part is where, if you dig, you will find water. So this is something called the Great Artesian Basin, um, and pretty much anywhere Australia, in Australia, except that yellow patch in the middle where nobody lives, and the yellow patch on the top right, which are mountains, um, you can dig on any farm property and you will find water. Um, so James Randi summarized it when he said to the water diviners, he said, the biggest challenge for you would be if we called you out to a property, we got you to use your equipment, walk around the property and tell us where to dig where we will not find water. And they wouldn't be able to do it. And this is something called, you know, the counterfactual, uh, which people often don't think about. It's the other side of the coin. Um, and, and this is really the same reaction with surgery. I'm going to show you a whole lot of surgical procedures that we're going to talk about. Um, and what happens is that people will tend to improve after these operations. And so surgeons in a way are finding water. Surgeons are the water diviners um, that find water. Their patients uh, often feel better. And so they attribute that improvement to their surgery rather than the fact that the patient would have gotten better anyway.